All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit more about nine to one anons, and we're going to compare core types. So a few weeks ago, I did a video on these mix 43 cores for nine to one anons, and we tested the number of wraps or windings on each one of these five, seven, and nine. And we compared their ability to transform impedance. And we also looked at an efficiency rating that was derived from doing an insertion loss reading with an NOVNA. We're going to do that today. We're going to compare these 43 mix cores to these 61 mix cores that I wound up. And uh, we're going to do the same test. And we're going to see if the mix 61 is any better for use than the mix 43. Now, in this test, we test bands from 160 meters all the way up to 10 meters. And we'll perform those tests using the Nano VNA. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll see what we find. Okay, in order to measure the ability of these cores to transform impedance, what we've done is, is we've created a dummy load. And this is just using some resistors here. In total, they equal 151 ohms of resistance. Let me just connect this. And before everybody gets too worked up, I fully realize that I'm testing this with DC current and it is not a reactive test like you would get with AC current, but this is just a quick sanity check to see if this is near 150 ohms. So when you look at a nine to one on on nine times 50 ohms gives you 450. So what we should see from these cores is close to a one to one SWR here on the multimeter that you can see this is in a kilo ohms range that we're around 451, 452. So this is gonna work for our needs and I'll come back and show you how we connect that to the core so we can do our test. Okay, so what we've done is we've taken our 61 core and we connected it to this BNC binding post, which we will connect to our nano VNA. And we're gonna connect this on the channel zero port to get an S11 reflection measurement. And then, then we've taken our load and then we've connected it to our antenna lead coming off of the core and then shorted that into the ground. And this will simulate a antenna of a random length for a random wire antenna for which you use a nine to one on on. So let's go ahead and get this connected. We're going to fire up nano VNA saver. So it's a little bit easier to read and we'll be right back. Okay, so we have run the sweep. If you take a look at the upper left hand corner, you can see that we have a sweep that runs from 1.5 megahertz all the way to 30 megahertz. Each sweep is consisting of 101 data points and we have 50 segments giving us 5050 data points across the entire sweep. So if we take a look at our markers, we have seven markers and they are all the way from 160, 80, 40, 30, 20, 15 and 10 meters. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at our results and they don't look too bad. At 160, we're a little high at 1.438 SWR. Um, everything else looks to be below 1.27, which is pretty good, except for marker number seven in the 10 meter band and the 10 meter band creeps up a little bit there. If we take a look, we're at 1.27 exactly where the marker is, but the rest of it's a little bit higher. Now, keep in mind, when you use a 9 to 1 on, on, on a random wire antenna, you are supposed to use a tuner to touch it up. So we're not concerned about these measures, but it does look like that our transformer is able to transform impedance at a 9 to 1 ratio. We're close to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this as our current reference. I'm going to come back when I connect the mix 43. This is the mix 61. We're going to connect to mix 43 and then we're going to do a comparison. Okay, and we're back and the sweep for the mix 43 is in green and a reference sweep for the mix 61 is in blue. And if you take a look, the mix 43 is much lower at 20 meters and below above that you start to see some degradation in the ability of the mix 43 to perform the transformation of the 150 ohm load uh, it's still not bad it's below 1.5 all the way across and as i mentioned you use a tuner typically for these 9 to 1 onions so i'm not saying anything that would be problematic or concerning for me but uh, you do see better performance at the higher bands from the mix 61 now what we're going to do, and I'll show you how I connect this, is I'm going to connect these up in parallel, I'm sorry, in series, and we're going to test an insertion loss uh, measurement. It's called an S21 logmatic 
measurement that we use the nano VNA for. And that will tell us how much loss we have through these cores and tell us which core is more efficient. So let me go ahead and do that and we'll be right back. Okay, what we can see here are MIX-61 cores and I have the antenna connector for both of these soldered together connected into these BNC adapters. And then from here, I have the ground shorted out. So what we essentially have are two of these in series and we're gonna run our signal out of channel zero and into channel one and then measure any loss. So let's come back with nano VNA saver and see what we find. All right, we've run our sweep and it looks really, really good for the MIX-61 cores. Uh, when you take a look at marker number one, which you can see is, is that we have a negative 0.05, I'm sorry, negative 0.505. And what we need to do is divide that by two because we're running the signal through two cores. So we're really looking at a negative 0.25 at our lowest or our most insertion loss. So that's really, really good. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set this as my current reference, and then I'm going to connect the mix uh, 43 and we're going to take a look at that. Okay, we've run the sweep for the mix 43. That is in green and the reference of the 61 is in blue. And what we can see is, is that we have more efficiency at 160 meters. Um, it's very close when we look at 80 meters, but for the rest of it, it looks like the mix 61 core is a little bit more efficient. I'm not sure this means enough to make a difference. I think you could use either one of these cores in any of the uh, any antennas that you're building. Uh, but keep in mind, I think that above 20 meters, so if you're looking at like 17, 15, 10, 12, uh, I think that you would want to look at potentially using the 61 because it, it uh, transformed the impedance a little bit better. But again, I'm not really sure it's enough to make any significant difference. Let's take a look at a data table where I compare these after dividing the results by two and we can get the actual efficiency numbers. All right, folks, so here we are with the data table. We can take a look. The top row is our toroid for the F14043. The bottom row is the MIX-61. And what we can see by taking a look at this is that there's really not a lot of difference, and I wouldn't call any of the difference significant. Uh, we do see some more efficiency, somewhere around 4% at 160 meters. I wouldn't recommend using a 140 core at 160 meters anyway. Um, and if we take a look at 10 meters, we're seeing some more efficiency on the 43 by around 2%, somewhere give or take there, 2.5%. Um, but you can take a look at this and you can make your own determinations or decisions as to around which core you want to use. Remember the 61 was a little bit better at the uh, higher frequencies, the 43 was a little bit better in terms of SWR at the lower frequencies. So I'm not seeing anything really compelling here to say buy a 61 over a 43, but that's your choice and not mine. Anyhow, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.